Talofa and welcome to all our viewers. This is Curriculum Support Program, Lela Aso Awaonga. Special for Talofa going out to all our Year 12 students taking computer studies. Today, our program will be based on Strand 1, which is Personal Computer System and Management. Later on in our lesson, we will have a video clip assisting you, helping you to learn more about our topic, which is to Uatapelu is going to take you through learning about computer system and basic hardware components. So, sit up straight and enjoy learning computer system. Hello everyone. Today's subject is computer studies for year 12. And we are on strand one, personal computer system and management. Today's lesson, We'll talk about the computer system or the basic hardware components. Our learning outcomes are name the components of a personal computer, define and describe each component of a personal computer, describe the functions of the components, and explain the interactions between the components. Our keywords that are listed on the screen. So by the end of the lesson, you will be able to learn and understand the meanings of these terms and their uses. Before we identify each component of a personal computer, let's start with a question. What are computers? Computers are electronic machines that perform tasks for us, such as maths calculations. They also store, retrieve, and process data, and communicate electronically. These are the two types of computers that most people use, desktop PCs and laptop PCs. PCs stand for personal computers. Computers are everywhere. We use them at homes, in offices, at churches, in schools, at universities, and different organizations. Okay. Let's look at the main components of a personal computer. Each desktop computer is made up of four basic components. In the picture, you see the flat panel display, which is the monitor or the screen, the keyboard, a mouse, and a system unit. Ovaengata wana leole afam salaina ilitatu le sona. So, what a computer does and how the operations by the components are performed. Input data using a keyboard and a mouse, store data in the memory, processes data by the central processing unit and output data either through the monitor or the printer. The keyboard and mouse are examples of input devices, whereas the monitor and printer are examples of output devices. Let us now look at the input devices and their functions. Keyboard and mouse. This send data and commands into the system unit. Let us turn our attention to the output devices. One, the monitor gives a visual display of outputs 
whereas to the printer can say hard copy of output. This shows the user what has been processed. The system unit and what it contains or holds. We will also introduce the term hardware and what it means in the system. Hardware are actually parts of the computer that we can touch and feel. The parts inside the system unit are neither input nor output because they are already inside the case. We now shift our attention to the brain of the computer, the CPU or the central processing unit. This is where raw data is processed and the results are then output. We now look at the storage capacities of a computer. One, the main memory consists of two main types. One, the RAM chip. RAM means random access memory which stores data in the CPU is currently working on. This is a place for temporary storage, a volatile memory. Two, the ROM chip. ROM means read-only memory, which contains permanent instructions and unchanging data, meaning the data still remains when the computer is turned off. Note, ROM is non-volatile, meaning permanent storage. Two, secondary memory are storage devices example hard disks flash drives cds etc and etc note that the main feature of the secondary memory it is not directly connected to the cpu refer note the cycle in the illustration Processing is done by the CPU. Process data is sent to the primary memory. From the primary memory, data is then stored in the secondary memory for recalling, for further processing, or for printing. Some examples of storage devices are listed. HDD, hard disk drive, which resides inside the computer. Remo removable storage devices, external hard disk drive, USB flash drive or memory stick, compact disk drives, CD, DVD drives. This is a view and description of a hard disk drive. Hard disk drive, a magnetic disk drive that can store very large amounts of data. This is the device that stores all the computer's program and most of the files. A USB flash drive are also known as a USB stick, USB thumb drive, or pen drive. It's a black and play portable storage device that uses flash memory. It can store and pack up important files and can be used in place of a compact disc. A view of a DVD drive which operates using a laser to read and write data onto compact discs or CDs. The computer internal power supply and its functions. It distributes power to all the individual hardware components. It contains a transformer, 
responsible for changing the power that comes from the wall into usable electricity for the computer. If you work with computers, you've likely heard terms like RAM, hard drive, and processor mentioned by tech support or others who are more interested in what goes on inside of a computer's case. If you've always wondered what the various components of your computer are for, but have never really had the time to look into it, then this video is just for you. While each one of these components is complex enough to spend a lifetime learning about, I'm going to give a very broad and general overview. A typical desktop computer comes down to these seven essential parts. Case, power supply, motherboard, CPU, RAM, hard drive, and graphics cards. These are the fundamental parts of any desktop computer. It may seem daunting at first, so let's separate these into two categories. Simple ones and the more complex ones. For starters, let's look at the case. The case is nothing more than a big hunk of plastic that houses everything else. Some of them have more or less physical space, some of them have different parts where you can put screws in or this or that, but at the end of the day, all the case really does is provide a nice enclosed system for everything else. Next up, we have the power supply. This part of your computer, almost always located on the bottom, is the part that plugs into the wall and provides all of the other parts with the electricity needed to do their thing. You can think of it as an extremely advanced AC adapter. The last of the simple parts to mention is the motherboard. The motherboard is a wide and flat circuit board that all of the other components plug into. It's the part that lets all of these components send electrical currents, composing data, between each other. While not particularly expensive, the motherboard is arguably the most important component because without it, you'd have nowhere to put anything else. So that's it for the simple components. Now let's move on to the more complex parts, the ones that deal with data. The four main components to keep in mind here are CPU, RAM, hard drive, and graphics card. Now first things first, I'm going to establish some terminology. Keep in mind that CPU is also known as the central processing unit or processor. These terms all refer to the same thing. They are completely interchangeable. RAM stands for random access memory and is often referred to as just memory. A hard drive is often referred to as a disk drive or storage. And a graphics card is also known as a GPU or graphics processing unit. For this explanation, I'll be using the terms CPU, RAM, hard drive, and graphics card. So let's start with the CPU. The CPU is where your computer does things. It isn't really capable of storing very much data at all, but it's very good at doing things with data. Quickly reading it, arranging it, doing the type of quick and massive calculations needed to run your programs. This is where most of your programs are essentially run from. It's often referred to as the brain of the computer. I personally don't like this description because really your entire computer is just a brain. It's just the center part of your computer's brain. Basically everything that happens in your computer goes through your CPU at some point. Now let's talk about RAM and hard drive at the same time because they have a very unique relationship, which is probably why people often confuse the two. Your hard drive is where all of your data is stored. When your computer tells you you're running low on space, it's because your hard drive is almost full. All of the data that makes up your videos, pictures, documents, project files, or the 3D worlds and models that make up a game are all stored here. While hard drives can store lots of data, they're relatively bad at accessing that data quickly. Everything is accessed through a tiny little wire here, and because most hard drives are made up of spinning disks, your hard drive isn't going to be able to constantly give your CPU the information it needs to run certain programs. That's where RAM comes in. RAM is another form of storage. It stores the exact same kind of data as your hard drive, but RAM sacrifices storage space for nearly instant accessibility. Unlike your hard drive, which sends all of its data through a tiny little thin wire, your RAM is arranged in these long, thin sticks that insert into your motherboard. Think about a storage unit. If you have a massive warehouse with only a thin doorway, it's going to be difficult to get in, find what you need, and get out if it's kind of spread all over the place. You'll have to go through a tiny door. But if you have a long, wide storage shed that's got a big, massive garage composing an entire side of it, you won't be able to store as much, but things are significantly easier to get to. Typically, if your computer has a thousand gigabytes of storage space in your hard drive, 
it's likely got about 16 gigabytes worth of RAM. Here's where you put the stuff you own but you aren't currently using, and this smaller one is where you put the stuff that you are using and need to be able to get in and out of quickly. When you run a program or a project file, your CPU identifies what parts of data are needed for that program to run, it pulls them from your hard drive, and then it stores them in your RAM sticks for quick accessibility. This is why when you start a new level of a game, for instance, it has to load. Anytime you see loading, it's loading the data that composes that level from your bulky hard drive into your RAM. From a user's perspective, just follow this rule of thumb. RAM allows you to run intensive programs, while disk space allows you to have more of these in programs installed. It also allows you to have more of the data they're referencing, whether it be pictures, videos, or mods. And finally, we get to the graphics card. With all of the calculations going on in your computer to turn a bunch of numbers that basically come down to ones and zeros into a constantly updated three-dimensional world, the final and most important and arguably most difficult step is to display that on your monitor. It's possible for your motherboard to do this alone, but it's not gonna look good, and it's certainly not gonna be able to do much. Your graphics card is essentially an entire computer in and of itself dedicated to the sole task of figuring out what pixels need to light up on your screen, in what color, and at what time. If you were playing a game that had a very busy and high texture world with lots of models and different angles and colors, your CPU is the thing that creates that world. It knows where the stuff is, and it does so with data that's been stored in your RAM, which was loaded out of your hard drive, but it's your graphics card that figures out what it's supposed to look like based on where you're standing in the world. Without getting too off topic here, if you're somebody who likes math, I highly recommend you look up fast inverse square root, which is directly related to how three-dimensional worlds calculate perspectives. So that pretty much sums it up. There are other components worth mentioning, such as cooling systems or internal wireless cards, but really those are extras. So to summarize what I talked about so far, the case stores everything in a physical box. The power supply gives electricity to what needs it. The motherboard is the body that everything plugs into. The CPU does everything. RAM stores data that is needed for quick access. Hard drives store everything that you have installed and the data that goes along with those programs. While the graphics card figures out how it's all supposed to look on your monitor. To summarize our lesson, computers, are electronics devices that stores, retrieves, and process data, and they let us communicate electronically. Examples of input devices, keyboard and mouse, output device, monitor or printer, storage device, USB flash drive or CD, DVD drive, Process device is the CPU central processing unit. Shown is a simple flowchart linking the four basic operations by a computer. Given our two activities which are based on our lesson. Activity one, label the parts of the computer with the given names below. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Activity 2. Write the differences between the two memories, RAM and ROM. Write the differences between the two memories, RAM and ROM. Okay, now this is the solution for activity one. That label the parts of the computer with the given names. 
Ya sea que más hipo sa o la chat. And also the solution for activity two. Difference between RAM and ROM. Yes, yeah, yeah, if I leave, I tell you that all solution now, what about? Yeah, that's all is on the name of the Ilene Yasso. Hope you have enjoyed our program today. I'll tell you, it's all fast, it's all fast.